Howdy everybody, this is Steve and we're gonna do a logic probe kit build today. And we'll use this in future diagnostics of the Commodore 64 machines and maybe some other retro machines as we play along a little bit. Let's get this thing opened up and see what it looks like. It comes in a baggie. Undo the baggie, pull out the directions. And as you'd expect from any good YouTuber, it is my civic duty, my responsibility, if you will, to put a link in the description down below for, for kits that we build on the channel in case you wanna get one and build it yourself. So let's take a look and see what all we get in this kit. All right, I've got a bag of capacitors, I've got a bag of resistors, uh, LED chip, transistors, diodes. Oh, it even comes with solder. That's cool. That's right, I said solder. The probe tip, a couple on-off switches. That, that's too hard to be shrink tubing. I don't know what that is. Circuit board. Circuit board looks... Yeah, circuit board's just a little warped. A little rough on the edges too. And this is a single-sided circuit board, so those are always fun to solder. Usually the, the vias go all the way through the board. These are just coated on the back, so it all of your logic is on this side of the board and there's nothing on here except for paint. And then we have a pretty color to put onto our machine and then model LP525. This is an Alenco kit and usually they do pretty good. This is lead-free solder, I just checked that. I saw, I saw the California warning on the bottom which made me assume this was lead-free and so that means we're just gonna toss it. I don't do lead-free solder. I want all the poison all the time. And it's got a nice little probe case. All right, so this is just gonna be the build video. We'll do a separate video about uh, using this when we get to actually use it. Let's take a look at these instructions and see if these are any good. There is a QR code there if you wanna scan that. Parts list, symbols. That's pretty much all I need to get it built. Identifying resistor values. Identifying capacitor values. Unit conversions. Circuit description of what it does. There, it's all in frame. If you wanna read that, you can pause it and read it. How to solder properly. Stand resistor on end when called for. Diodes, same thing. Jumper wire from discarded legs. This is why I keep all of my resistor legs after I cut them off. And you will need jumper wires in here. Oop, turned a little bit too far. How to assemble the components. Cut off the tabs on the switches to get them to sit properly. Put the stickers on. And then operating instructions. All right, well, let's get to building. I'm going to use the Kaiweets KM601 meter for this build. And the reason why I'm gonna do that, I've said it in prior videos, is I am not very good at reading color codes on resistors. And so in order to not read color codes on resistors, I use a meter. And that solves that problem right away. The other thing that I do is I sort them out. So if I have seven of one kind and it calls for seven of one kind, that must be what it is. So there is a set of three, and that looks like a set of four to me. Seven, all right, so there's the set of seven. All right, this is R21, 23, and 24. 
There is 24. And I was told that I say perfect a lot when I do this. So, perfect. One of the things I had noticed on these resistors as I was building this setup is that there are a lot of really similar resistance values here. And one of the problems that you're gonna run into is this is 15 kilo ohms plus or minus 5%, 18 kilo ohms plus or minus 5%, 20 kilo ohms plus or minus 5%. That means that all three of these are about the same. So what I did was I took these guys here and uh, put them in order of lowest value to highest value. And this was like 13.9 and this was 16.9 or 17.2 and this was 21.0 or something like that. And then I just used them that way. It's not that big of a deal. This is not a uh, super impressive, super heavy duty, industrial scientific, get you to the moon and back kind of device. This is a little kit that I got for a pretty low price and we'll figure out how well it works. There are color codes over here. Again, I'm, I can't read those. I must be colorblind or something, but I can't really read the, the resistor color codes. I don't worry about it. We'll, we'll figure out what we figure out as we go on. So this is what it looks like when they are all done. And due to the nature of the board, your soldering is not gonna be as clean as it uh, normally is because this is a single layer board. And some of these, let me see if I can find one for you. Yeah, right here. So some of these traces are actually touching each other, which is fine because they, I'm sure they actually touch each other in the circuit. So it's, it's okay to do that, but be aware of that when you are soldering, cause you'll see something turn up like this. And that's, that's the nature of the beast is that that's what happens when those things happen. So let's, let's uh, get after the next part of this, which is capacitors. So I got a whole big box of capacitors here. Well, bag. Now I have a little tiny bag of capacitors. And now I have no bag of capacitors. All right. So there's a set of two. And there's a couple here. What do we have? These are numbered. These are a little bit easier to read. 201. 102. 102. 104. Z5U. 473M, and that's not a set of two. That's just one that's that's still on its still on its last legs. And that looks like it's a 101. 101. Okay. So on here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That works. And then it will tell you. These are all disc caps because they look like discs, but it'll tell you the, the code on it, 101, 201, 102. So that, that'll be fairly easy to get done. Let's get after that. Okay, those all look good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven capacitors done. Semiconductors. Diodes, oh, those are gonna be fun because they're actually different diodes. Uh, transistors, transistors, LEDs, okay. All right, that's obviously the IC and the socket for the IC. We have transistors are these three-legged beasts. Let's see, what do we have here? 2N39, 2N39. 2N39, are they all 2N39s? Oh, the 3904s and 3906s, I gotta, I gotta read more numbers. 04, 06, 06. That should be a four. That's a four, that's a six. Okay, and then these are regular diodes. Is this gonna be easy? Three LEDs, good, yep. And then, Five of one and one of the other. 
Okay, there's one. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Ah, uh, I was I was sweating that because these are these are almost impossible to read on. All right, so five of one, one of the other. All right, so for diodes, they got a little stripey thing on one side and not on the other side. Let's figure out where this one goes so we can put it in for you. D6. So D6 is right there, and you can see on the board there's a little stripe on one side and not on the other. Make those two match. Okay, for this one here, I can't remember if they were connected on the board or not. So I'm going to pull out some solder wick and wick away some of that solder and see if that helps any. I think they were tied together. Yep, they were tied together. Let's put them back together. Let's just keep on keeping on. Let's do the LEDs next. All three LEDs are the same. LEDs have a flat side. Hard to see, but they have a flat side. Flat side goes towards the flat side on the silk screen, like so. They also have a short leg. Short leg corresponds to the flat side, if that makes it easier for you. You don't need to use pliers, I'm just trying to get these as flush mounted as possible. Transistors. Transistors are the same way. There is a special shape on the silk screen, and then there is a special shape on the transistor where they are half round. And we're looking for the O4s, two of them, to go into Q2 and Q4. This circuit board is pretty cheap. And I might suggest sanding it down a bit on the edges because I'm getting all kinds of grit all over my work surface and it's not fun. All right, sockets. Sockets are fun. Uh, there's a couple of different techniques for putting sockets in. There is a notch at the top. There is a notch on the silk screen. Make sure those line up. And when you get them in, what I like to do is solder down one corner of it and then possibly a second corner, I don't know, it depends on how I'm feeling. But uh, solder down one corner of it, get it tacked in place, and then you can check to make sure that it's lined up the way that you want, and then solder the rest of them down. And I'm being very, ouch. Yeah, see how it's, it's sitting up high? So what you do is you just warm it up again and bring it straight through. And now it is laying flat. And I very specifically didn't use any tape or uh, sticking putty or anything like that because I didn't want to. But you could very easily put down a piece of tape. And then same thing with the chip. Chip goes in with its notch lined up with the notch on the, I can already feel it lined up with the notch on the circuit board, lined up with the notch on the socket. I can already feel that these legs are splayed too wide. And there you are. That's in, what's next? I think we got all of those. Where'd my pen go? Right, we did diode, we did those four diodes, we did those two transistors, we did those three transistors, we did that chip, we did those three LEDs. All right, so miscellaneous, so we gotta put the PC board in. Huh. Okay, so these are the switches, and they did tell us to cut off. I hate using these good snips for this kind of work. All right, so those are off. Let's see how they look now. 
look like they go through the board to me. That one hits up against a resistor. Let me tell you just to cut off the tabs. That's what I did. Okay, and so I don't know if you saw that or not, but I made a little bit of a solder bridge between those pins. And all you have to do is take your soldering iron and drag down between them, and that solves the solder bridge problem. PC board, the two switches, the probe tip, the case, the screws, the socket, the label front, label back, wire, power cord, tubing, shrink tubing. Oh, they actually wanted them higher up off the board. That's okay, I'm not measuring that mess. I think next up is the wire and the tip. Red shrink tubing goes on the tip. Let's take red shrink tubing. Let's take that and put it on the... It's already shrunk. Okay, we'll put that on afterwards, because we can. Yeah, I can see why they wanted the LEDs up higher. That's okay, though. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Green wire to the minus hole, red wire to the plus hole. This is a four-handed job right here. You know what? They talked about those jumpers. Yep. Okay, let me put those jumpers in before I do this. I saved the legs of the diode off specifically to do jumper work with. That got hot pretty quick. All right, so there are the two jumpers installed, whatever they're for. And I am going to strip off more of this wire here, maybe to make that easier to do, I don't know. Okay, that shrink tubing was actually just a tad too big. And so it's just making a mess of itself. So what I'm gonna do is remove a bunch of it. And you know what, I'm gonna remove all of it. Okay, so what's that? what that is there for is to insulate the tip of your tool from shorting out against other metal as you're inserting it into your device under test, your dut. However, it uh, was the wrong size shrink tubing. So I couldn't shrink it. It was already the size of the probe tip. So getting it on was getting difficult. What do they want with the little black wire? So we didn't talk about the little black wire yet. I didn't see anything about what they wanted us to do with this. Let's get some stickers on. It's sticker time. All 
Okay, that is all put together as far as I can tell. We need a nine volt battery to test it with. Let's get our friendly multimeter out first. And let's see if this thing has any power. Minus 9.7, because I have it backwards. 9.7, perfect. Okay, so the battery works. So now we hook up the positive lead to the positive and the negative lead to the negative. And we'll see if there's anything. We have high, low, and pulse. We set it to mem. Okay. Set the pulse mem switch to the pulse position. Sorry, set it to pulse. Okay, that doesn't line up very well. Okay, now it sets the pulse. And we touch the probe tip to the positive side of the battery. And nothing. Touch the probe tip to the negative side of the battery and it says low, that works. So, oh, set this to TTL position, okay. Low light is on, high light is on. Okay, so that works. Let's see if I can get that on camera for you guys. Set this to TTL, set this to pulse, touch low to negative side, and we get a light in the low section. Touch high to the, touch the probe to the positive side and you get a light in the high position. All right, it works. Okay, so overall thoughts of this kit. It's probably worth every dollar I paid for it and I, I can't imagine I paid all that much for it because it is not the highest quality of kit, but if you are wanting to test out your solder skills, maybe. A concern of mine when it comes to testing out solder skills is that something like this, where it's kind of a lower quality circuit board and a lower quality kit in general, I mean, the switch didn't line up, the shrink tubing was the wrong size. I have no idea what this is for. It's not in the instructions. It does work. It, it does do the thing. So far, we will continue to test. Um, I have made it this far in my electronics troubleshooting career without needing one in the first place, but I'm also kind of stubborn and, and don't buy things until I have either A, lots of desire to get one, which means really fast, or B, no desire at all, which means really slow. And this was one of those really slow things. This might wind up being a, a great asset to the channel. I might wind up upgrading to a better one in the future. I don't know. There will be a link to this in the description down below if you would like to pick one up and see if you can outsolder me with it. Um, Co. usually makes some pretty simple kits. There's lots of them out there. Uh, this is just one of them. I happened to pick this up while I was buying something else and figured I would play with it because I've always seen it on other channels. Enjoy! And if you see this in a future episode, then you'll know that it's working great or you'll hear me talk about how wonderful it is then. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome.